Yeah, you. Do you know who number 17 is? Thank you, you're of no help to me whatsoever. <laughs> Thank you. to Rancho Verde High School for Inland Sports. Live coverage of the CIF Southern Section Division II Finals. We have once again teamed up with Teen Vision TV 16 to bring you the very best sports coverage of this game and all the championship games tonight. Final score tonight, the Mustangs guys coming up a little bit short against Upland, 24 to 13, a back and forth battle. Again, going into this contest, we were talking about field position, right? Who's gonna play great defense, maybe some turnovers that could be costly. Guys, before we get to the video highlights, your general thoughts on this game between Upland and, and Rancho Verde. Miles, I'll start with you and Coach Reck, you'll be on deck. I think you're looking at a tale of two halves. We talked about it earlier. It's gonna be really important for Rancho Verde to get that uh, Upland offense off the field. They did it in the first half. The defense was stout, so, and, and but the second half, Upland comes in, transitions, and turns around and says, hey, listen, we're gonna drive this ball. We're gonna take this ball right down the field. And that's exactly what they did. Nice job there by Upland. All right, how about you, Coach Reck, as uh, Upland was able to get a couple scoring drives in the second half, and that was enough. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, that offensive line took over in that second half. I mean, they just took it to Rancho Verde, and there wasn't much they could do. Offensively, you're going to talk about Rancho Verde. You know, they're, they're going to walk away from this thinking what could have been. Yeah. Uh, you, you talk about A.J. Uh, Duffy and Ugorji. Uh, even by putting Jackson Turner at quarterback, you, know, you lose a wide receiver. Uh, they're they're going to talk about what could have been. They, they hung tough with, with, with Upland. But ultimately, it was that offensive line that was the difference in the ball game. They wore down the defense, and you saw it in that last drive. And also, you yeah. start beginning to start looking at Upland, how well they did. What about Deedman? Deedman comes in. Yeah. You know what? He ends up running, rushing for 169 yards, averaging almost six yards per carry, and he's a second-string running back. So they, they all gathered once their guy went down, and they did a nice job. Give credit to Upland. They played well, and they played hard. Yeah, yeah well, we didn't see Cameron Davis come back out of the locker room suited up and, and ready to go. I thought, well, you know, maybe. Maybe this is uh, an area that Rancho Verde can maybe jump on uh, Upland here, and it turned out to, to be something in a, in a positive way for the Highlanders, I guess, because you mentioned Deadman had himself a, a pretty solid game here in the second half and helped carry this team. I did a great job, and you have to give credit to the right side of that offensive line. They were just dominant out there for him. And then from there, the quarterback did what he had to do, just, just a few little rushes here and there. And, and he was able to master that extremely well. Live TV, right? Live Anything TV, can happen. Go. Anything can happen. He's one of our own, too. That's the crazy <laughs> part. Uh, okay, so we have Cullen Holt. He's our sideline reporter tonight. He is trying to gather some of uh, some of the players and Coach Salter, the winning coach from Upland High School. But right now, let's go to the highlights, guys. We have highlights from this game, and we'll show you how this all came to be here at Rancho Verde High School. Huge packed side uh, for Rancho Verde and Upland, too. They traveled very, very well tonight. Early on, it was quarterback Jackson Turner. Yes, quarterback Jackson Turner to Andre McKinney for the first touchdown.
down over the game, 7-zip. Here was another big play early in this contest as Upland, they were able to drive all the way down the field from the doorstep, fourth down, and the Mustangs turn them away. In fact, there was a fumble on the play, but nonetheless, it was a big stop for Rancho Verde's defense. Now the offense, still trying to get something going for Upland. Cameron Walker actually had three field goals in this game. He was an important part of this football game. That made it 7-3 in the second quarter. Then later, Turner on the run. Check out this pass. Slips through the hands of McKinney. Then a great catch by 17 here for the Mustangs. Now we go back with the Mustangs trying to go downfield. That kind of that Philly special play, right, where you could go back to the quarterback. It's intercepted by Upland's Zeron Manley. It was 7-6 Rancho Verde at halftime to the third quarter. Here comes that guy, Julian Deadman. Big run for the Highlanders, and they are deep in Rancho Verde territory. That would set up this. Quarterback Evan Rowe to Kyle Thornton on the touchdown strike right into your living room. It's 12-7. Upland takes its first lead of the game. Now they go for the two-point conversion. It's Rowe to Tevin Ford. Ford gets in as well. And Upland now leading the Mustangs 14-7. Walker adds another field goal here, so it makes it 17-7. So all of a sudden, the Highlanders are on top by 10. Rancho Verde not giving up. Fourth quarter, Jackson Turner. The second effort across the goal line for the touchdown. That was with less than six minutes to play. 17-13 was the score at that point. So Rancho Verde hoping to keep it that way, but Upland would go down the field. Another big scoring drive. Here comes number five once again. Ford in for the touchdown for Upland, and that would be the difference as we finish here with a final of 24 to 13. So guys, you can see the tail of the tape just watching the film on this one. You know, Rancho Verde had their chances. They had them where they wanted, but in the second half, uh, Upland was able to put together a couple scoring drives, and that was the difference. Here was the final play of the game that sealed the deal, and I guess it was fitting that Justin Flo would have a sack, their star defensive player, to end this as Coach Salter and the Highlanders are celebrating uh, beyond us. In fact, they're still taking a lot of pictures with family and friends, but, well, but wow, things, what a contest. Yeah. But one of the things that you brought up, that you talked about, Upland, how they were answering the call. And the, and the field goal was just absolutely huge. It kept them in the game. They go three, they go another three at six. All of a sudden it's seven, six. And now there's the, the mojo starts to turn. Score the touchdown, go for two. And all of a sudden these guys are really starting to work and playing hard football. Yeah, not only playing hard football, working that clock. I mean, they shortened this game a lot by, by doing what they did and being so successful at it. And then from there, not, not getting caught up in, in the penalties. Uh, that's one of the things that you saw out of Upland was the composure. We talked about it on the sideline, you and I, uh, very quickly, and the importance of being collected and being composed. And the, and the, the man child out there even settled down <laughs> his, his, his compadre on the sideline. How big was that interception third quarter that got called back because of a, a penalty? Yeah. That drive, it sustains that drive. They end up scoring and making it 14 to seven at that point. I think like a lot of these championship games, we look back at a, maybe a play or two and we're like, this could have been a different football game. Yeah. But in the end, it's Upland 24 to 13. Again, we're, we're efforting some uh, interviews. In fact, it looks like Cullen Holt's going to have uh, Coach Salter in just a moment. But let's mention those other championship scores real quick before we go to Cullen Holt live. Um, Culver, hold on on the highlights real quick, Johnny, because I know Coach is going to be over there ready in just a moment. Uh, but real quick, the scores on this one, Culver City beating San Jacinto in Division 7, 61-21 in Division 10. Eisenhower is the champion. They beat Highland 35-18. And in Division 12, it's Linfield Christian blasting Artesia 70-32. That was the final score. We do have some video highlights from those games in just a moment. But it looks like Cullen Hull is standing by with Coach Tim Salter, the winning coach uh, from Upland High School, as his Highlanders get the job done winning the CIF Southern Section Division II title. So if Cullen Holt's ready and Coach Salter, let's toss it over to Cullen. Hey guys, I'm here with now CIF Southern Section Division II champion head coach Tim Salter. Coach, that has a nice ring to it. How does that sound to you? It feels wonderful. It sounds perfect and, and uh, I couldn't be happier. I couldn't be happier for the players in our community and in in the school. It's a fantastic feeling. Coach, Upland football has a long tradition of success. You know, what is it about you guys in this program that you're back every year? Well, we have great players. I mean, I, understand I have a lot of the same coaches that I've had since 1994. So I have uh, coaches that are dedicated to the program, dedicated to the kids, 
and the chemistry of the coaching staff has always been good. So I think that spills over to the kids, it gives them confidence, but you can't win without great players. Coach, what's special about this 2018 squad? You guys had to battle back in this game against a very good Rancho Verde squad. Well, uh, we were behind in all of our four wins in the playoffs. We were, uh, this week, I, I said, this week we were, on, we were only a three-point underdog. Last, last week we were a nine-point underdog. The week before that we were 11-point underdog. So the kids have been playing with the chip on their shoulder ever since our loss to Rancho. And uh, I think they relish the underdog status. Coach, how do you refocus your guys now? Next week you got a SoCal Regional you got to play in. I don't know that yet. <laughs> I think we'll go home today. We don't get to see them tomorrow because we're still in season, so we can't communicate with them tomorrow. Uh, I think the coaching staff will meet tomorrow. We'll go over things. We'll review the film, and we're back to work on Monday. Coach, thank you so much. Congratulations. Go celebrate this one with your team. Okay, thank you. Back to you guys. All right, great job as Thank always, you, Cullen. That was Coach Salter uh, after the win here. Again, Upland taking the championship 24 to 13. Uh, and again, uh, on the flip side with Coach Duffy at Rancho Verde, good to see him uh, getting the Mustangs back in the finals. I know it's familiar territory with him, but again, as we talked in the pregame show, you know, with, with Steinberg leaving and there was some turnover, we, we weren't sure what to expect, but obviously this was a championship caliber team at Rancho Verde as well. Not only is it a championship caliber team, it's a championship caliber coaching staff. Everybody knows that they're that they're five guys down. They have to focus. They need they need to re-energize themselves. And then they came out in that first half, Coach. You and I talked about it, like, wow, are, are, will they be able to keep this momentum going? And and I really thought that they could for a long time through that. But all of a sudden, they just came out a little bit too much to handle, especially on that defensive side. 221 yards rushing uh, tonight. And 160, 155 of it come in the second half. That's just brutal. But how how exciting was that for that first possession for Rancho Verde to come away with a touchdown and, and in, in dramatic fashion, nice and couple of stop. balls. And then you're exactly right. The, the goal line stand there to, to follow it up. And you thought that maybe there was some magic that was going to happen. Uh, unfortunately, it just petered out. Yeah, and you know what, and give some credit to Jackson Turner. I'm looking at Jackson Turner out there. He's a wide receiver, a corner, which is or free safety, wherever he's going to play at the next level. And he goes back and starts chucking the ball around like he's been doing it all year. I mean, what an athlete. I think a lot of gaming out there tonight. 17 played huge, averaged 14 yards per carry. Then you're looking at um, McKinney. He, he did a nice job himself at, at 15 yards per uh, per reception. But you got to give it up for the Upland defense. Upland held that Ranch Verde offensive line down to 2.9 yards per rush. So good job there by, by that box. Here's another look at the video as we kind of break this game down. And you guys are right. I mean, the Mustangs came out hot out of the gate. The touchdown, the big defensive stop as well. And you felt like, as you called the little Mustang magic coach, yeah. uh, Coach Rec over here, that, you know, even being shorthanded, you felt like, okay, we, at least we've got a game tonight. They might, Rancho Verde might be shorthanded, but we're going to have a ball game. Yeah. And it was close. Also, also, they, also, they, ahead, they, they just couldn't keep the offense going. No. Uh, there just wasn't enough there. Uh, and, and that's how... Upland gets the opportunity to to really go to work, yeah. and and they were very physical up front and and just just wore out the defense. All of a sudden, you, you put Ty McCullough back out there in the slot, and all of a sudden those linebackers are coming in from that <laughs> side. They got to forget about that quickly, especially with the, with the, with the, with the starting quarterback. So good job by Rancho Verde. It's tough to say good job when, when they finally lose that last game, but all in all, nice job this season. Yeah, so Upland wins the Division II title again. The final score, 24-13 to against Rancho Verde. So even from the opening game against Heritage until now, Upland's had a tough road, and uh, now they're crowned Division II champions. So congratulations to the Highlanders. Now we have a couple other videos we want to roll out as well here in our live post-game show from Rancho Verde High School. Johnny, let's go to Division Seven, where San Jacinto was hosting Culver City. And, guys, the Tigers playing uh, in their first CIF Finals since 2007 but trying to win their first ever championship. They had never won a CIF Southern Section title. And you can see early on, 14-14 in the second quarter. This was a close game. Culver City would eventually grab the lead here in the second quarter on that touchdown there. So 21-14. So I know we were checking on Twitter for a while. We're like, okay, not too far from here in San Jacinto. We've got another close game. 
I kept going back to Twitter and that lead for Culver City, especially in the second half, continued to grow and grow and grow. And San Jacinto was the home team here as they were trying to go to the end zone, picked off here uh, by Culver City. But I guess it just wasn't meant to be tonight for San Jacinto as, again, Culver City goes on to win big 61 to 21. It was close for a while. It was 28, 20, 28, 21 at, uh, at the half. So unbelievable. There's one of the San Jacinto touchdowns here for the Tigers. It was a fantastic season uh, for San Jacinto, but simply uh, just not enough tonight against a very good Culver City team. So their first appearance in the finals since 2007, uh, but trying to win their first championship in 89 years. It will have to wait at least one more year. Uh, maybe next year will be, will, will be it, right? 90 hey, year, 90 hey, year celebration. Even numbers, why not? <laughs> <laughs> so congratulations to uh, San Jacinto on, on a great season, but they fall tonight to Culver City. City 61 to 21 back out here live at Rancho Verde High School again uh, you can see Upland at midfield you know taking their time taking the pictures they got family members here the trophy I never won a championship I don't know what it's like but for, for them uh, celebrating a, a big win tonight here at, at Rancho Verde High School it is, it is one of those things coach we've been there um, man on both sides right you know when you win and, and, and also uh, you when know you when, lose, when it doesn't when go your way lose. I mean I remember I remember being young and pulling one out and then being a little bit older and pulling one out but the championship feeling that's something that these guys are going to carry forward for a very 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 long time they talk about creating that brotherhood this just begins to solidify it and the championship ball it's fun. I mean, you've got to remember those days. It's so hard to get here, and, and this, this week just seems to take so long, and then the game goes by so fast. And you hope that when it's over, you're the ones that are dancing and taking pictures and not, not dejectedly walking to the locker room. But somebody's got to win. Somebody's got to lose. That's the nature of the sport. And, and, you, and you're going to be brushing your teeth in the morning, and all of a sudden you're going to stop, you're reflecting, you're going to reflect, you're like, oh, I wish I had that one play back. <laughs> <laughs> Especially for the seniors, yeah, right? You know, you know it, it's, it's bittersweet. They're moving on. Uh, so it's, it's actually a commencement in the life, you know. It's so, But these are great lessons that, that to take away from, from here. It's like, hey, we competed even though we didn't have everything. We still showed up. And uh, I just can't say enough about what Coach Duff did with these guys to get themselves ready and go forward with what they did. Matter of fact, you and I commented it was fun standing on the sideline to listen to what what's going on and how yeah, well they did. Just watching the coaches watching and the players coaches interact and, and the hugs as, as the, as the right. game came towards the end and you could kind of see what was going to happen. Uh, you're right. It is a brotherhood. Uh, some of these guys won't see each other for 20 years and they'll get together and it'll be like they, they are, they've always been together. Yeah. And for Upland, a, a Division II championship. And if I, re, if I recall correctly, when the playoff divisions were first released for this upcoming season, I believe Upland was the last team in Division II. So they were one spot away from going into Division I. Division II champions, I think it's safe to say you can pencil Upland in for <laughs> Division I come next season. So it's only hey, going to get tougher for the Highlanders. They earned it. They, they certainly earned it. Big win tonight um, and uh, by the Highlanders. Now, we also have some video from uh, the Eisenhower game, courtesy of our friends at Fox Sports. Uh, they were live streaming all these games, including this one here tonight. Eisenhower taking on Highland. And again, they were playing in their first championship game since 1993. And the Eagles hosting in the city of Rialto. They get the job done tonight as they beat Highland 35 to 18. Here is a big touchdown run for the Eagles. Guys, we talked about Eisenhower in the glory days of, you know, those battles with Foe High, and then, you know, they hit a rough patch. Now Eisenhower's back. And the, and the good thing, too, for Eisenhower is not only will the Eagles go to a state regional, I mean, Upland will as well, but now they're going to find out tomorrow who they're going to play in a Southern California regional game to possibly play for a state championship down the road. And you start looking at Eisenhower. I, I haven't seen much of them this year, but just in film, they're able to get off the ball. Whoever they play, I mean, believe me, it's going to be a contest. So here's Eisenhower again. Fairly close with Highland. There is a big run. They were up by 10 in the fourth quarter, but they would do just enough to win 35 to 18 again. Their first CIF Southern Section Championship since 1993. Um, and this one coming in Division 10 to cap off uh, their regular season and playoffs at 14 and 0. They have not lost all season long, and now they will continue their season at least for one more week and maybe even two as Goodlow goes in for a touchdown. 
touchdown there. That would put the icing on the cake. 35-18 was your final score tonight. So congratulations to Eisenhower. So if you look across the board, we had Eisenhower and Linfield Christian in Upland winning championships tonight. We had San Gorgonio and Kaiser last night. So pretty good uh, two nights, Friday and Saturday night for uh, Inland Empire football teams across the board. And we talked about that earlier. You know, we, we, we spoke of the of the Mountain Pass League. We talked about how powerful they were. The, all four of the five teams making it to the semifinals. Um, and then and then a couple of them in, in the championship as, as we turn around and look, look at San Jacinto. Uh, you have great football out here. Yeah. And a lot of people, they, they, you know, they, they want to look into Orange County or the Tours of Los Angeles. But, you know, every, everything is coming. And if you notice the championships, they are running through the IE. It has to run through Centennial. Division two has to run through. Well, we Rancho got Upland Bird. and Rancho and Heritage Citrus. and Norco and right. yeah, Citrus Hill and now Citrus in Division Hill. three. And Division and Cajon. three. You know, the, I mean, the, so you, you have you have teams out here that are just going to ball. And uh, right now, I, I saw five guys that could play probably for USC tomorrow. Sure. <laughs> they could have used them tonight. <laughs> they probably could. So, uh, you know, so there, there's a lot to be said about the football that's being played out here, the coaching that comes out here, and, and what these kids bring to the IE. And here they go. Yeah, here's the Highlanders. Here they go. Here they go. Guys, we're live right now. Yeah. Yeah. It feels good. It feels good. And we love the coverage from Fox Preps every day, every every Friday. We love it. Every Friday, yes. Congratulations, guys. Monday's a work day. Monday's a work day. Back to school. So these guys will find out tomorrow who they're going to play in the state regional game. So we've got Upland, we've got Eisenhower, we got Linfield Christian, we got San Gorgonio, and we got Kaiser. They will all find out tomorrow on Sunday. In fact, I saw one of the, the coaches uh, actually from San Gorgonio. He was hanging out watching this game, and I said, when do you guys find out exactly on Sunday? And he's like, we don't know. Maybe in the, probably in the afternoon. they got to find out you know, where the sites are going to be, who's going to host. There's a, there's a lot the CIF state office has to kind of cipher through to find out, you know, who's going to play who, the matchups, and of course, we talked about in the pregame show, I mean, they want to sell tickets. They want to make sure that these state regional games are going to have butts in the seats, right? right so right, there's right. a good crowd, so. Hey, hey, you know what? Let's talk about Upland. What about the crowd? They talk about they the traveled school. great. Traveled standing, large. Standing room on their side. Traveled large. I was very impressed with Upland. Yeah. That stands over there holds 3,000 people. <laughs> they had 3,000 yeah. in. And then another probably a thousand standing around. Yes, four thousand yeah. people driving in from Upland. It was it was definitely standing room before kickoff. Yeah, uh, well before kickoff. I was, it was here a great contest. A spot. <laughs> oh, look at the Heisman. doing, doing the Heisman pose. Yeah, yeah. big it, time. It suddenly <laughs> suddenly <laughs> smells like victory. Yeah. Oh yeah, you gotta do victory. Come on, somebody show me the Fortnite victory. That's Who can do Fortnite? Fortnite Fort, yeah, who's got Fortnite? Oh, who's got Fortnite victory? Oh, I can't Chris, that. Chris, my boy, Chris got it. The Fortnite victory. Do it. Go on, you gotta come over here. You gotta come over here. Fortnite victory. Is that it right there? I don't play Fortnite. I don't know. Man, there you go. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not a Fortnite guy, but I play Madden. I play 2K. I play UFC. I play FIFA. I do it all. He capping. I do it all. He capping. I'll run. I'll run. Congratulations, guys. Thank you. Hey, and best of luck in the state playoffs. Now you guys uh, play another week. At least another week. We're gonna go get them. But um, I just want to give a shout out if I ever see this to my mom, Katrina Moffat. I love you. Go to Inland Sports. Alita Hicks Moffat. I love you. My grandpa, Raimundo <laughs> Moffat, I love you. My cousin Bradley, you a dog. You up next. Bishop Gorman, 2021. Uh, you got a big family. I love y'all. I love y'all. Hey, hey let's go. Ronnie Simmons, Charlie Simmons, I love both of y'all. Cindy, I love you too. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you guys are going to miss the bus. Inland Sports Show, your favorite show, man. <laughs> Winning's fun, huh? It is. Winning's fun. Winning's fun. And Winning's now the fun. best part is, I mean, for these guys, they're probably excited to go to practice on Monday, right? You know, and I put the helmet on back, in, you know, for another week and, and game it's plan again. that whole thing. Like, like, before they changed the season, it was like, who's playing after Thanksgiving? And, yeah. uh, and and that's what it was about. It's like, are we going to practice on Thanksgiving? You're right. You know, and so these these guys, they're all looking forward to it. Monday is a work day. Yep. And 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 they're looking at this as one more game. Now they're looking at state. Yeah. Good job by the coach. They're gonna get to practice in December. They'll be practicing in December. That's exciting. At least playing, right? Well, right. I, I guess technically they could play Friday, right? Which would be the thirtieth. 
Friday like the thirtieth. Yep. But if they win that, then the state, yeah, would be uh, what mm -hmm. December fourteenth and fifteenth now, as the state office moved it uh, a week back. I don't know if you guys heard that they, the state office moved it a week back. It was supposed to be December seventh and eighth, but now the state championships will be the fourteenth and fifteenth because Smart of the wildfires. Move. Yeah, and especially in Northern California, so they had their their state regional games kind of uh, messed up up there, so they had to adjust uh, accordingly. So, anyways, let's wrap things up here live at Rancho Verde High School, where Upland is your CIS Southern Section Division Two champion. 24-13, the final score. Coach Rack Miles, I can't thank you guys enough. This has been a lot of fun hanging out with you. It's getting cold, and we're basically the last ones in the stadium, but it's been fun. Hey, it's been great, Coach. Great season this year, man. Great season. Couldn't lot, be happier. Lot of fun. Yeah. And Pep, thanks for having us. It was awesome. Awesome, man. And a big thanks to our, our dear friend, Johnny Nunez, and I guess Steve Brockman, too, if he's still around. Yeah, you know what? Hey, check out that beard on Steve. Yeah, is that a beard? I thought he was like much oh, dirt on his face or something. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Somebody help him. I thought he was married. <laughs> no, we appreciate you guys, Johnny Brockman, and the entire Teen Vision TV 16, uh, you know, TV 16 crew. We appreciate everything you do. That guy's got abs like me. That's incredible. Um, but we appreciate everything they do. So Tuesday on the Inland Sports TV show, we'll be back in studio. Uh, we'll break down the championship games once more and also, more importantly, look ahead to the state regional games uh, in Southern California. For Coach Rec, for Miles, my name is Pep Fernandez and everyone at the Inland Sports TV show and Teen Vision TV 16. We'll see you next time. We're out. The Inland Sports Show is brought to you by Spoiled. Quick quality oil change. Spoil yourself and your car at Spoiled. Kin Sporting Goods. They have all of your sporting gear needs, letterman's jackets, and team uniforms. Catalano Motors in Corona off of Tomesco Canyon Road. You're going to save thousands of dollars at Catalano Motors. And boost performance training with Coach Ray Bass. Athletes of all levels and all sports are going to boost performance training in Corona.